Good afternoon and welcome uh, to another segment of the story behind the songs. I'm Pastor Debbie Upton, pastor of Center and Swatch United Methodist Churches in Center, Colorado. Um, written by George Matheson. O oh, love that will not let me go, I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. What a beautiful hymn for this Ash Wednesday to look at. Many hymn writers say they struggle in composing a hymn text, revising and tweaking it until the meter and the choice of images are exactly right. Others conceive this hymn as whole and transmit it to paper as quickly as they can write it down. <clears throat> in the case of O Love That Will Not Let Me Go, a mystical experience inspired the creative process. George Matheson, who lived between 1842 and 1906, provides us with the account of its origins of one of the most beloved hymns of the 19th century. My hymn was composed in a maness, which is the uh, Presbyterian house of a minister, of Inman on evening of, of 6th of June, 1882. Something happened to me which was known only to myself and which caused me the most severe mental suffering. The hymn was the fruit of that suffering. It was the quickest bit of work I ever did in my life. I had the impression rather of having it dictated to me by some inward voice of that working itself out of me. I am quite sure that the whole work was completed in five minutes, and equally sure it never received at my hands any retouching or correction. I have no natural gift of rhythm. All other verses I've ever written are manufactured articles. This came as a day spring from on high. I have never been able to gain once more that same fever in verse. This hymn was published in 1882 while he was in England, Argyshire, though uh, some may have speculated we are not sure of the cause of the intense suffering that led to the composition of the hymn. It was first published in the Church of Scotland monthly magazine called Life and Work in January of 1882, some say 1883 and soon afterward in the Scottish Hymnal in 1885. Though nearly blind by 18, Matheson became a brilliant student at Glasgow University. He never married, and his sister learned Greek, Latin, and Hebrew to help him through his theological studies. She also helped with his pastoral responsibilities. He served effectively as the minister of, of in uh, parishes in Glasgow, and in 1886 became the pastor of the 2,000-member St. Bernard's Parish Church in Edinburgh. Matheson authored several books on theology and one volume of poetry, Sacred Songs of 1890. He was awarded the Doctor of Divinity degree by the University of Edinburgh in 1879 and the LLD from the University of Aberdeen in 1902. Albert L. Peace, 1844 to 1912, a well-known Scottish organist of his day, wrote the tune St. Margaret at the request of the Scottish Hymnal Committee. According to Peace, the tune came to him as quickly as the text had come to Matheson. After reading it over carefully, I wrote the music straight off and may say that the link of the first note is hardly dry when I finished the tune. Each of the four stanzas begins with the key word, love, light, joy, and cross, that are only attributes of his relationship with Christ, but also the names given to Christ. Love is heaven for a weary soul, as deep as the ocean. The second stanza focuses on light that illuminates the way 
of the singer, our flickering torch, augmented by the sunshine's blaze of Christ, the light of the world. Stanza three is one of joy, a joy that seeks for us through pain. The rainbow, as promised, of hope following the rain, indicating that morn shall tearless be. The cross is the theme of the concluding stanza. Through Christ's suffering on the cross, blossoms red are formed that lead to the birth of new life. Citing the Handbook of Church Hymnology in 1951 by Scottish hymnologists James Moffat and Miller Patrick, Carlton Young notes that when Matheson wrote Blossoms Red, he was thinking of the blossom that comes out of sacrifice, the sacrificial life which blossoms by shedding itself. White is the blossom of prosperity, red of sacrificing love. Again, this is a, contributed by Dr. Michael Hahn, uh, the professor of church music at uh, Perkins School of Theology. And what a beautiful hymn for this Ash Wednesday. Oh, love that will not let me go. for this Sunday as we begin our Lent, our walk through Lent. I hope that you uh, will join us this evening via Zoom or, or Facebook Live for our Ash Wednesday service. We will also be holding it here in person. Um, then on Sunday, as we begin our Sundays of Lent, we will... Um, we will have that in person as well as on Zoom and Facebook Live. Thank you again for joining me, and may you have a blessed day.